Hi, this is the first video in a mini video series where I build a couple of uh, financial spreadsheets, um, which I hope will uh, help you understand your finances better and the future prospects of your investments better, including uh, various risk levels and various more asset classes and so forth. Uh, someone recently sent me a message asking me, well, Lars, how do I become a millionaire investing along the lines you suggest? So while I dread being the next guy on the internet telling you how to become a millionaire, I will show you how much money you need to put aside for how long um, and what you can expect in terms of returns uh, in order you, for you to reasonably have the expectation of becoming a millionaire from this. Uh, but of course, um, the same uh, spreadsheets can be used for a broad range of scenarios, time horizons, asset classes, risk levels. Um, and perhaps most important, I'll, I'll introduce a, a couple of scenario analyses, simple scenario analysis, where we introduce uh, the idea that although we can reasonably expect to make perhaps 5% a year after inflation if we invest in a broad equity index, um, we all know equity markets are very volatile. And how does that look like uh, in various outcomes, uh, particularly over a multi-year period? Um, the huge advantage as I see it of these spreadsheets is that uh, by building them yourself from scratch, you will much better understand how the math all fits together, perhaps makes you more comfortable with, um, with the sort of investment type analysis we'll undertake here, um, and just basically get a better sense of how it all fits together. My name is Lars Croyer. Uh, I'm a former hedge fund manager who's written a couple of books about finance, uh, and I'm now doing these videos as a hobby. I should say I'm not a financial advisor, so make sure you undertake uh, your own due diligence and take your own advice before you do any of the stuff I say in this or in any other videos. Um, but anyhow, let's get started with a, with a spreadsheet and, and uh, get right into it. So here you have a blank spreadsheet. Let's just start by um, giving it a title. So you can call it My Financial Model. Um, and let's start with the, the, the age you want to, you're doing this, uh, let's say number of years, um, what you, the start, what, what do you call the prior year, um, prior year, prior year, um, then let's see what's your annual contribution, um, then those two things together will be the start of year money you'll have or investment you'll have. Let's do the investment return. Uh, return. That's funny formatting right there. Um, and so the start of year plus the investment return will be the end of year number. Um, now, uh, let's just say you start at year 23. The following year will be year 23 plus 1. Um, so year 23 is year zero. The following year will obviously be, oops. The following year will be year one. Um, let's say you started with zero. Um, let's say your annual contribution is a thousand. Just for now, that means that your start of year number is a thousand, right? The annual uh, contribution plus whatever you had in the prior year. Let's just, I'm a former investment banger in a prior life, so I'm a bit of a stickler for formatting. Um, there you go. So, um, so investment return. So this is what we talked about earlier. Let's, uh, in this, uh, for now, assume you invest all the money in an equity index tracker. Um, I think we can reasonably expect a 5% return on that. Uh, obviously, that varies a huge amount, but um, and we'll introduce the risk later. But for now, let's assume that is 5% uh, 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 compounding, annual compounding. Um, uh, of course, that's after inflation, so that's a real number. Uh, before inflation, it might be more like 7%. So let's make that 0.07. Let's say the inflation is 0.02% for... Uh, a real return or return after inflation uh, is then the 7% minus the 2%. Uh, let's make all of these into percentages. Um, and uh, 
Let's make another couple of assumptions, which I think are all very reasonable. We'll need a couple of rows space for that. Uh, namely trading cost. Uh, let's assume, just make a point that we're assuming zero, which uh, assume zero. In reality, that would be reality. That would probably be 0.1% or even more than that. Uh, um, let's also say taxes. Again, let's just make a note that we assume none. You might be doing this kind of saving through a uh, pension or you know, if you want, we can add taxes at a later uh, stage. The final thing I want to contrib uh, uh, add here, let's do another space, is <clears throat> growth in annual, uh, growth in annual contribution. Uh, you know, a lot of people when they start out saving, they don't have a lot of uh, they don't have a lot of money to save, but that that goes up over time. So let's assume uh, three percent for now. Final thing in me being in formatting stickler, um, I always think you make sure that your inputs are uh, blue or some color, so you recognize them as inputs. Which uh, let's see, all of this is this is this is this is these are all inputs. So basically in a model like this, you should only ever touch the blue numbers. Um, this is, uh, again, an investment banker uh, legacy thing for me. Um, so your investment return, let's say you started with 1,000 and you're uh, expecting to make the 5% return. So that uh, means you made 50 in this year. So the start of the year, um, you had nothing before, you contributed a thousand at the start of the year, so that's the start of the year, capital of a thousand. You put it in equity markets, you could reasonably expect to make 5% or 50 on that. Again, this is all in real numbers, which means that as we go further into the future, um, you know, these are numbers that uh, have the spending power of today. Um, and are the, the monies that have the spending power of today, so we don't have to worry about inflation and any of this. So at the end of the first year, you have um, what you had at the start of the year plus a thousand. Let's say the next year, you now in the prior year, so at the end of year one, uh, you have the thousand and fifty. You have a contribution which we said was going to uh, grow by the, in this case, this scenario, three percent. The start um, of the year then is again the same formula. We can copy the formula down. The investment return, E7 is a constant, uh, so we can copy the, oops, uh, copy that down, and the end of the year number is a constant. Let's see, the annual contribution is also a constant. Um, so that's that. So now, and let me do an another bit of formatting stick. Let's see here. So now it looks, it's comma separated, which, which is helpful when the numbers get bigger. So now we can copy this down. Um, you know, let's get down to, oops, uh, let's go down to 67. Let's say we retire at 67. We start at 23 and 67. So here we have a, the first version of the model. We're saying if you invest uh, money in um, the equity markets and you assume a return after inflation of 5%, which is pretty reasonable, albeit extremely volatile, that we assume no trading costs and no taxes, and that we contribute a 1,000 in the first year and grow that 1,000 by 3% a year, we will, uh, and sorry, and we started um, at the age of 23, we will in retirement have 273,000, or we can expect to have 273,000. Of course, again, the reality will be far more volatile than that. Uh, we are obviously not guaranteed to make 5% a year. That's a reasonable expected average, um, but, uh, but we'll get to into the introduction of risk later. Um, actually, let's make another slight adjustment to the spreadsheet where we just put the number up here so we can see it easily. So. Uh, savings at, um, let's see how to do that, and text um, this number, and I've got a format, oops, it's formatted, can't believe it's been, oops, where did that go, um, so there you go, so now we know at, at age 67, it will be that number, let's find that, um, 
let's put a big box around that so we we can um, uh, we can see it easily. So so here you have it, right? So so now we see with these assumption twenty three. You contribute a thousand a year that grows three percent. Um, and you put in equity markets, you expect to make 5% compounding. Um, we now have a super simple financial model. Um, you know, this is an example where we're using to save for retirement, but you can really use it for any, uh, any period. You can also say, I make no annual contribution, but I have you know, 10,000 to start with. Um, and, and you can just see, well, what does 10,000 get me? Um, in in um, um, in that period, in this case, forty four years. Uh, of course, you can also see what did the ten thousand get me after ten years, which is the number the, the, the row I'm highlighting. So that's seventeen thousand is the reasonable expectation. Um, you know, this is uh, you know obviously you should not just buy equities, but uh, again we're building this uh, model slowly. I'll add the other the asset classes and risk. Uh, later on, and of course, as I said earlier, you should always, uh, if you're uncertain about any of this, do talk to a financial advisor. Um, I think it's 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 also um, let's go back to the earlier example where you do annual contributions. I think it's perhaps closer to the reality of some people. Um, let's uh, let's by the way start by answering my friend from earlier that what does it take for you to be a millionaire um, using this kind of slightly boring type of index investing that I'm talking about. So in this case, you say at 3,000, you're not quite a millionaire. You can either uh, you know, grow uh, the contributions by 4%. So if you contribute 3,000 and grow that contribution by 4%, uh, you will pretty much retire a millionaire. You hear about 1% short. Um, let's say you contribute 4,000 a year. Now you're well in excess, and then you only... So here's an example, right? So. So now you're, you, you ask me, what do I need to do to retire a millionaire? Uh, I say you have to contribute 4000 a year um, and grow that contribution by 3%. And if you invest that in, in equity markets at an annual expectation of 5%, you have no trading costs or taxes, um, then, um, then you can reasonably expect that that compounds at a, at a, at a, 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 such that you become a millionaire. Obviously, the earlier you start saving, the greater the benefit of the compounding. Um, what you can also see from this kind of math is that um, you know your annual contribution already in year um, in year sixteen seventeen, you can reasonably expect that your investment return actually exceeds your annual contribution. So think of how hard a lot of us have to work to put aside this kind of savings um, every year, and already sixteen seventeen years hence. You can reasonably expect that your your um, uh, you know your your uh, investment return actually exceeds what um, uh, what you contributed, which is which is almost you know it's it's like that's a perfect example of your money working for you. I also want to do the you know the, the total contribution um, uh, tri contribution. Uh, which is going to basically the sum of the contribution column. Um, there you go. So that's four thousand. But yeah, you know, let's keep the first number a constant. So there you go. And copy this down. So what this shows us is, that in this case, over our working life, uh, you see in 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 cell I sixty one, the one. Uh, down here, you, we have contributed over all those years 370,000. Again, we're completely agnostic to currencies. Obviously, 370,000 um, pounds is greater than 370,000 dollars, which is greater than 370,000 Danish kroner, which is where I'm from. Um, but what we also see is that we contributed 370,000 and we ended up, uh, we, we reasonably expected to end up with over a million. So. That just shows you the immense power of compounding and of regular savings. In fact, I think for the finance savvy people watching this video, they will appreciate this is a video about compounding returns and the benefit of regular savings. I will say, you know, in my view, the compounding is undoubtedly true and you should embrace it. I think Buffett called it the greatest power in the universe or something like that. Um, but I think more importantly for those that are not as accustomed to financial uh, lingo, um, I would say that the benefit of thinking about 
finance this kind of a way is huge. So generally, the amount of financial stability and general economic well-being that you get from these kind of regular savings and investing in this kind of a product that at a very low cost compound your money over a long period of time, the benefit of that are astronomical. I think they're, they're sometimes almost hard to exaggerate. Um, and, and, I, and, and, and well worth starting sooner rather than later. By the way, I will say, please uh, comment in the email, uh, sorry, in the, in the video, if there's something you want me to, to add. Um, you know, this obviously works with any number. In this case, I started at 23. I could start at age 50, right? So, you know, age 50, we go down to the bottom. And you may not forecast to the age of 94, but, but you can say, well, what would happen at the age of 60 if the same number? Well, you know, this is the column I've highlighted. We can say, well, at age 50, but I started with, you know, 100,000, but then I, then again, I only contributed you know, 5,000 or 1,000 a year. Well, what would I have at age 67? And you can just see that, see the row that I've now highlighted. And the answer is you would have 277. Again, very volatile. So this model works for any, uh, that's the beautiful thing of these spreadsheets. It works for any amount that you, um, um, that you want. Um, one other thing I want to just say, um, you know, uh, you, we often hear stories of um, of people promising you huge returns, and let's just let's just say someone comes to you and says, "Look, Lars, I, I'm going to promise you 20% return a year. I'm going to I'm the new Warren Buffett. So let's put in 20, see what happens, right?" And you say, "Well, really, does that sound right? I contribute 4,000 a year, and at the and in uh, so let's put it back to age 23." And at 67, I've made 54 million. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's the saying, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. Um, and in many cases, that's the case, right? So, so be very, very cynical. Some, you know, let's take the example of even sort of some scammer. Say, I'm going to make you 10% a month, guaranteed, no, no risk. And let's say, well, let's just say, what would that be a year? That's 10% to the power of the 12 minus 1. So that makes basically someone saying we're gonna we're gonna make you two hundred and thirteen percent per year. So that's just just to be conservative, <laughs> round down to two hundred percent a year. And let's say you just do that with a thousand. So so really to put it in 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 sort of I mean, it's not even room, right? So this is basically someone saying you will have the amount of money in this cell, which is whatever, that's a billion, that's a billion. So you're gonna have six million billion billions, which is more money that's ever existed in the universe if this person is right and you can sustain it for that amount of time. In other words, it's simply untrue. It's just, it's a load of garbage. So don't fall for the scammers. Um, these numbers may not be as exciting, but but they're much more real. Um, now, the, the final thing I just want to mention is um, that obviously this is a super simple spreadsheet. You've seen it's not taking long to make. In later videos, let me just delete this number. Um, and let me make this column the same width as um, format column width. What's that? Okay, and then we copy that. Um, so in later videos, I'll be introducing you know the minimal risk asset that uh, you know you should not just most people should not just invest in equities, which is this, this video has been an example of, and where you can do different splits between the minimal risk asset and, and equities. I've made another couple of videos about how this portfolio of just minimal risk asset and equities tailored for your risk profile is actually a super powerful portfolio. Go check those out. Um, I will uh, also introduce uh, the concept of risk, um, that this is an expected outcome, but how broad a range does this really cover? Uh, you know, will we, could it be easily one, and you know, this, uh, the one we have up on the screen is 200, let's make it our millionaire friend again, what was that, 4,000 a year growing at 3%. So, so, you know, my millionaire uh, uh, person who sent me a question saying, how do I become a millionaire? And I say, well, you can reasonably expect to become a millionaire. If you start at 23, you contribute 4,000 a year, grow that 3% and invest in equity markets. You can reasonably expect to retire a millionaire. But once we introduce risk, can, you know, you can reasonably expect it, but can it be five times as big? 
can it be close to zero? The answer is yes, but how likely is that? We need to think about that. Um, I'll also add, uh, and I'll show you how to think about that with some scenario analysis. I'll also add some, some videos about how we should think about the risk proportions depending on stages of our life um, and, and also how much you reasonably need to retire. Um, but again, please uh, send me uh, some comments if there's something else you want me to add um, to, a, to a later video. Um, and uh, you know, one final thing I'll mention, if you follow my mouse, you can see up in the formula line, um, this is when I walk through the video, this is where you can see how the actual formulas were, right? So, so this is, um, uh, you know, this is uh, quite il illustrative. So, but, but I'll stop here for now, but I'll see you. Um, I'll, I'll continue this spreadsheet in, in the next uh, video. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope this has been interesting and useful. In the next video, I will be adding uh, the minimal risk asset. I will be in future videos adding scenario analysis. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to hear when these, these and future videos come up. You can also share this video on social media if you think um, your friends would benefit from watching it. Um, but in any case, I hope to see you in the next video.